Hello and welcome to this Blue School's uh, first webinar. As far as I can see, we are already 107 people. Uh, I'm very glad to have you with us even in this online version, but okay. Uh, my name is Irene Gotzi and uh, firstly I will present you the agenda for this online seminar. Let me just uh, share my screen. And uh, as you can see now, this is just a sec. Uh, wait. This is the agenda for today's webinar. Um, first of all, you can see, uh, shall I put it? Okay, here. Uh, first, you can see uh, that uh, I will do uh, the opening as I do right now and a short presentation of the Blue Schools project along with uh, a short presentation of my company, IDEC. Then I will proceed with uh, presenting the guide for teachers. Uh, this is uh, a material that we've developed uh, with partners from Blue Schools on how to integrate Blue Economy in class. And then Miss Marina Bero from Petra Patrimonia Corsica will join us and she will uh, present the Blue European competition in schools. After that, Ms. Susanna Lascaridi, General Secretary of the Ekaterini Lascaridi Foundation in Greece and Director of Blue Cycle, will uh, present the educational programs that the Foundation is delivering and uh, some ideas and projects uh, on blue and circular economy. Then we will travel. I'm sorry, Irini. Irini. Yes? Yeah? Uh, you have not shared your, uh, your screen. I'm so sorry. Now? Can you see your screen, my screen now? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. I'm so sorry. Okay, so um, more or less I'm presenting the agenda. Um, I said uh, that uh, we will travel to the island of Astipalia, a Greek island in the Aegean Sea, and uh, Miss Labrini Grigori, the headmaster of the gymnasium of the island, will uh, uh, say her ideas and share some good practices on water resourcing and how to deal with them. And she will again present uh, the Ice Ring project and Erasmus Plus project about island depopulation. We will close this webinar with uh, Mr. Nguyen Zengiz and Ms. Suhai Ozbey from uh, the Antalya Provincial Directorate for National Education Turkey. Uh, they will say a few words about the twinning group that we've developed under the framework of this project. And then some questions could be answered and uh, we will do the closing. Uh, I would like to say that um, for this uh, webinar, you can raise your hand in case you want to ask some questions and you can refer to which panelist you would like to have the response from. So. Uh, a big welcome to IDEC company. As you can see, we are located in Piraeus, the biggest port in uh, Greece. And uh, in this pin, red pin over here, you can see uh, the port of Piraeus where the company is located. Uh, we are a training, consulting and high technology company founded by SME consultants with extensive experience in training and industry. We were founded in 1989. We were initially a limited company, but since 2001, we are a Societe Anonyme. We employ more than 16 people eventually with trainers on board. And uh, a quick look into our services. We deliver services related to management and consulting, to internet and software uh, applications, to training. Uh, we receive more than 300 trainees per year. And of course, we are involved in European projects. These are some logos from uh, European projects, as you can see, that IDEC has participated either as project leader or as partner. The Erasmus Plan Plus is the most famous one. And here are some uh, school education projects that IDEC um, participates. As you can see, there is a variety of uh, subjects like uh, technological learning, digital storytelling, Blue Schools, as you can see, it's the School for the Blue Economy, School Innovation Labs, Cultural Heritage in Primary Education. We are trying to integrate computational thinking in uh, teaching humanistic uh, sciences in schools. Uh, we have the DESIRE project about social innovation, reframed entrepreneurship, uh, DevCult, free, play to learn. 
And uh, these are some new projects approved uh, from the last call. Uh, we have the Climate Heritage Game, the INPAD, which is about participatory design in schools, the ISRIC project that the headmaster from Astipalia will say a few words, School Starters Hub, uh, about creating hubs through the participatory approach of a European platform, and a lot uh, more. A quick look into our current trainings. As you can see, there's again a variety of subjects related to innovation and creativity, to intercultural competencies, uh, dealing with refugees and migrants. Uh, you can see some game-based learning. Uh, the World Art Classroom is one of our famous ones, which mostly is implemented outdoors, visiting museums and cultural lad landscapes. And these are our brand new uh, trainings uh, related to either innovative learning methods or uh, inclusive education, STEM through robotics, values education, etc. This is our training center uh, website. This is where you can find information about our trainings. You can see the numbers. We have 31 years of experience. We deliver 50 different courses. We have ac accepted so far 5,000 trainees and we uh, participate in 300 transnational projects. This is our social media identity. You can find us either on our both websites, idec.gr or trainingcenter.gr. You can find us on Facebook, uh, you can contact us via uh, Instagram, and of course, you can email us. And this is the first presentation. I hope it wasn't too long. And then I want to share my screen again. Can you see my screen for the second presentation? Nefeli? Yes. Okay, I forgot to mention that today with me I have a, a very beloved colleague, Nefeli Dimopoulou. She is the facilitator and uh, she's going to help in uh, every uh, subject arised. So, this is, uh, wait, this is the Blue Economy in Secondary Schools. This is the webinar that you are about to uh, attend. So, a few words about the project. It is a two years project under the coordination of Petra Patrimonia Corsica in France and the participation of a cluster. Irini, share your screen again. Yeah, great. Okay, now? Can yes. you see my screen now? Yes, it's okay. Yes. Ah, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So sorry about that. Uh, as I said, uh, Blue Schools project is a two years project under the coordination of Petra Patrimonia Corsica in France. And in this project, along with uh, Corsica, we have a cluster of schools in Atuguya de Balea in Portugal, Hios Marine Club that represents a club of members from the Greek island of Hios, Ponatha, a Pan-Cyprian offshore nautical club, which is a non-profit association, Antalya Provincial, Provincial Directorate for National Education in Turkey, Instituto Canizzaro in Catania, Sicily, Narval Soldino Gymnasium in Estonia, and of course, IDEC. The Blue Schools project aims to introduce blue economy to school education and to support students on subjects related to blue economy and culture. And uh, the big objective of this project is to teach students how to build a sustainable future in coastal areas. The project's direct target groups are students and teachers in secondary school. So, uh, the intellectual outputs, or let's say what we're going to develop under, this, under the framework of this project, is first the Blue School concept, then the, the training for teachers about Blue Economy, which is the guide that I will present in a few moments. And we will also develop learning materials for students and implicate them in projects related to the blue economy. Uh, under the framework of this project, a transnational competition has been launched a few days ago. Uh, Marina Bero from Petra Patrimonia will say more about this. So, this is the cover of the guide for teachers. 
This guide wishes to offer tools and methodology created specifically for the teachers of secondary school. It will help them introduce and impart blue philosophy to students and prepare for the transformation of schools into blue ones. This is more or less the content uh, of the guide for teachers. You can see that there are uh, nine different modules. We are trying to analyze blue economy as much as we could. And then we present some features of a blue school and how to proceed towards it. Then uh, we suggest some educational uh, methodologies that could be implemented uh, in order for a blue project to be uh, alive. Uh, then we are giving some guidelines on how to develop a lesson plan related again to blue economy. Then we present some application of blue economy in schools, some indicative lesson plans, and of course some project ideas, which is the really interesting and practical part of the guide. So here uh, I will just be sharing some uh, um, pages from the guide so that you can have an idea of what this guide is about and how it is it has been structured. You can see a, a part from the Analyzing Blue Economy module, uh, which has some definitions. It has some uh, maps. Uh, it tries to identify some blue economy stakeholders and of course it can give an example of uh, for blue economy so that the teacher can have it as a roadmap. Here are some examples from countries around Europe, especially from countries that participate in this project. As you can see, there are some stakeholders and some people uh, related to blue economy in Catania and then in uh, Corsica. As you can see here, there are some companies from uh, uh, Greece. Lascaridis Foundation is one of them. And here is another module related to features of Blue School and how to proceed towards it. Uh, we had uh, so many online meetings in order to conclude on how many aspects of Blue Economy we would have in this guide. And so we have decided to integrate four different dimensions. The first one is the C belongs to us. The second one is Dynamic C. The third is Discover and Explore the C. And the fourth is C and Humanity. As you can see in, uh, in this guide, we also give some uh, extra suggested school activities to be developed in each dimension. Here you can see uh, some uh, school activities related to the sea belongs to us. Of course, in every dimension, there are several suggested school activities. Then uh, this module uh, is about blue economy about features of Blue School, sorry, and uh, it um, uh, speaks about coastal archaeology. You can see that there are some pictures showing how uh, divers and archaeologists archaeologist, uh, were uh, entering the sea and they were discovering uh, some very, very interesting uh, foundings. And of course, there are some extra activities here as well, so that you can uh, engage students and motivate them either to do a research on Blue Economy or maybe uh, fix an appointment with representatives of Blue Economy in their area. Here, uh, we have some aspects related to what used to happen back in the ancient times and uh, it is related to blue economy without the term being established in the first place. And uh, here you can see that there are many extra resources in footnotes that uh, can redirect you to useful online educational articles and videos, etc. Here is a table and an infographic uh, with numbers and statistics. Uh, these can be really engaging to students if you think that they want to compare what used to happen and what is happening right now. And here we have some questions that are related to national examples. Uh, there are uh, questions that you can address to either policymakers or uh, local authorities and get some answers. Uh, alternatively, you can do a desk research and find out if there is any blue economy in your country or in your region or whether schools are even involved in such a subject. 
Uh, as we move on and uh, we go to the module of educational methodology, uh, there are several parts here, like vision and strategy on how to build uh, this blue uh, project. Uh, we set the objectives. We are suggesting uh, for some ped pedagogical methods to be applied, such as flipped classroom and experimental learning. There are even definitions about these methods. There are definitions and presentations on uh, pedagogical resources such as teaching with data, simulations and models with digital or three-dimensional materials. And we have some examples, as you can see on your right of your screen, uh, about digital platforms and tools that could be useful in your uh, mission. Uh, then we have uh, another uh, module referring to how uh, to develop a lesson plan. It's a step-by-step -step guide with examples uh, that you can use in order to have a, a school project about blue economy. The next module is about applications of blue economy in schools and uh, partners from Corsica and uh, Cyprus have uh, developed uh, um, respectively the culture and gastronomy in course and sailing in the Mediterranean uh, sea part. This is uh, what I said at the beginning, the indicative lesson plan. Uh, this was uh, developed by school partners, especially from um, Portugal and uh, Estonia and uh, the Instituto Canizzaro from uh, Italy. And uh, we have some aspects and some feedback from uh, Turkish partner as well. Um, I hope it could be useful in terms of uh, implemented in uh, uh, class environment. There is the topic, as you can see, and then the contents, the goals, what are the skills that can be used or students should have as prerequisites than the subjects, the target audience, because each lesson plan is for different grade. Then we suggest some materials that could be used and exploited, uh, then the strategies, and uh, what can be useful in this indicative lesson plan is the fact that you can see in which di uh, dimension this lesson plan uh, is best to be implemented. And last but not least, this is some project ideas that we suggest uh, and I think that they could help teachers to launch blue projects in their classrooms. So that was it. Uh, I stopped sharing my screen and uh, the floor goes to Marina. Hi everybody. Oh, so Okay, I will share my screen. Can you tell me when you will be able to have a look at it? Can you see it? Yes. yes. Right. Perfect. Oops. Here. Okay. So um, I'm very happy also to, to have you all with us. Um, I will, so I'm Marina from France and I will present you uh, the Blue School competition. So the idea of the Blue School competition uh, came up with uh, the idea that all over Europe and beyond teachers uh, are looking for innovative ways of engaging their students with the big issues facing today's society. And <laughs> for sure we have uh, the COVID situation in mind. Um, Anyway, Blue School Partnership is inviting secondary schools teacher of all subjects to use the blue economy as a way of engaging students in school subjects and to share their ideas. Um, I will now present the framework of our competition. Uh, the competition is made in two parts. Uh, we have first um, what we've called, what have you done to become a blue school, which would represent one of the award. And the second part is the development of a blue economy project to solve a problem in blue economy. And there is five awards because you will see, and just after that, there are five categories. So to begin with, the first award uh, is about how, uh, what have you done to become a blue school? So the idea is that uh, the students 
will describe the action they have undertaken in their school to become blue. Uh, to do so, we define what is a blue school to us, so you can you will be able to download it from our website, um, which I will uh, present just after. Uh, but for us, the school uh, should be turned toward its seas and uh, implement sustainable practices uh, with the link with the maritime economy local ecosystem. Um, the idea would be to educate the students on sustainable development and encourage them to be involved in the society as a responsible citizens. Um, so, to be short, the idea is to introduce blue economy into school education uh, in a sustainable way. You have here the link uh, that I will share in the chat just after, in order to know more uh, about this blue school concept, as we called. Um, so, this has is one of the awards from the competition, and uh, it you would uh, the, the students sorry could. Uh, describe their action in a two minutes uh, video maximum. Oops, my screen is okay. Oops. Okay, and the second part of the competition is about the development of a blue economy project to solve a blue economy problem. So the idea is that students will have to address a problem of the blue economy they are uh, identifying and they have to find a solution or a resolution or reduction or soft exploitation of resources rather than destroying the coastal areas where they are living. Uh, the idea would have to be a project with a multidisciplinary approach, so meaning that um, they will uh, uh, have to, to use um, different disciplines in order to address this uh, problem. One of the project, well, each project must address one of the categories. So we have five categories, and there are some subcategories uh, which are indicative. They are not uh, into this PowerPoint, but I can also send it to you, or you can find it also on the website and in the competition framework, which is shared on the website. So the five categories are first tourism, coastline, and marine heritage. The second one is water sports. Third one is sea pollution and global warming. The fourth one is blue economy entrepreneurship. Uh, and the fifth one is the protection of the marine uh, environment. So the, the students are able to choose which of the category they want to address. And uh, yeah, and that the idea would be to, um, to find some uh, solution. A quick uh, reminder of the rules of our competition. Uh, it's open until the 10th of May, uh, 4 p.m. CET. It's open to all secondary schools from European Union countries and Turkey. Uh, the students uh, of the project must be between 12 and 16 years old. They might work in groups or individually, and because of COVID situation, uh, it might be hard for some countries to work in groups, so we made it individual or in groups. Uh, they can belong to the same class or different classes, uh, different levels if they want. Um, they also have to work, as I've said before, on several school subjects at the same time uh, to identify the problem and propose a solution. And if possible, uh, this will be uh, some points uh, to involve um, a local, external, public or private partner from the marine world, and also involve some member of the school other than the teachers. So, for example, uh, so the parents, uh, school staff, or or any any other else. The submission is through a video which might last two to five minutes length, and uh, which is might one gigabyte. Uh, it must be in English. If the students don't feel comfortable with the English, uh, you might add uh, some subtitles done by them or done by uh, the teacher, depending on, the, on their uh, willingness to do it. Um, 
through and uh, so it can be submitted sorry through email uh, at blueschool.competition at gmail.com and this has to be done before the 10th of May for PNCET. You can use retransfer or other means to download uh, in order for us to, to download it, uh, the, the project, because we know uh, it can be hard to send it by mail sometimes. The judging process. So from the 11th of May, when we will have uh, closed the competition, our jury, uh, which is composed by four members of the partnership, indeed it's the member of the partnership who are not schools. Uh, so one representative of PONASA, Caios Marine Club, IDEC and Petra Patrimonia Corsica, which were presented by uh, Irene before. So we will open the file and choose the winner according to the criteria of selection. It will uh, lead us on a grade on 20 points. So each criteria I will just uh, tell you after has one point. So uh, the first criteria is the impact of the project. So we will check if the project fits in the settled category, fit with the definition of blue economy, uh, if the project is relevant, between, uh, if there is some relevance, sorry, between needs and the solution, uh, the sustainability of the project will be also assessed and the impact in real life. The second criteria is the respect of terms and condition. Uh, so the project has to be multidisciplinary. So we have to hear in this video how, how they work uh, with different um, school subjects. So we also have to get the identification of the problem, uh, the identification of the solution, uh, involve some member from school, others and teachers, involve local actors. The third criteria is about communication, so the oral fluency. Uh, even if it's with some subtitle, I think we will uh, check this uh, oral fluency anyway. Uh, then you have the vocabulary and style, the clarity of ideas, the aesthetic sense and the creativity. Uh, so the creativity of the project, if it's an innovation uh, in relation to, to the existing practices. So if it's uh, most repetitive with some uh, ideas which we already know, you might not have the point if it's very something that we don't know or that it's uh, uh, not that much uh, used now, I, they might have a point. The fourth uh, criteria is how realistic is the project. So we will check uh, if the problem is well identified, if the solution is related to an existing situation. We will check also if it's affordable, uh, also the impact on local community and the solution uh, which can be implemented in real life. We will check this. So, it could be nice to have a superhero coming, but it might not be um, uh, realistic for our project. So we might uh, not give some points if we have our superhero who is uh, solving everything. So the project with, uh, with the best knot on 20 points uh, will be the winners in the different categories. So in the end, we have six awards. Uh, from all the categories I've presented before. The winners. Uh, so the winning schools will obtain uh, the book Renewable Energy Compass. And each pupils uh, will receive a certificate of winner for its own category. The, all the participants uh, who, who complied uh, with the term and reference uh, we receive a blue school badge in order not to left behind uh, anyone behind. You can uh, submit your proposition and any question to blueschool.competition at gmail.com. Uh, I must be clear here that all of the questions, the answers to the question have to be public. 
so we will uh, take time in order to publish them or on uh, our, um, our websites or on uh, Blue School and on Blue School. So uh, you can find all the information uh, about the competition on the website. You have the link here and you will also have all this information on our Facebook page, which is Blue Schools. Thank you uh, very much for your attention. I hope this was clear. Uh, not, I hope it was not that long. I'm not sure about the, the time. Um, and I will be glad to answer your question uh, after all the presentation. Thank you. Everything, everything was on time, Marina. Thank you very much. Do you think you Thank could you. share in the chat at least the, the email that uh, schools can uh, use in order to get in contact with us and uh, sure. be part of this competition? Thank you. Thank you very yeah, much. Sure. sure. Uh, do you see any questions, Nefeli, that uh, someone someone wants to to to put to ask to me or Marina? Mm -hmm. No, we do not have any questions. Okay, or, uh, so I give the floor to to Miss Lascaridi. It's kind of a little bit earlier. I hope it's not a problem for her. Welcome, Miss Lascaridis. We are uh, really happy to have you. Thank you for having us today. Uh, I'm not sure. Can you see my screen? You might be able to. You should be able yes. to see a white screen right now. We can. We can. Okay, just a minute, please. So first of all, I'd really like to thank uh, everybody for inviting us today. Uh, we are mostly here to discuss um, what Blue Cycle does, which is a blue and circular economy company. So I think it is uh, uh, maybe appropriate for um, the younger people in the audience as well to have an idea of how this would uh, look like, let's say, in the real world. I'll go very briefly about what uh, the Las Caritas Foundation uh, has been doing. Um, it's a quite varied foundation, um, cultural institution. I invite you to visit uh, the website up here if you would like to have a, uh, have a see about all the programs that we're doing. Um, the numbers here are the programs, um, educational programs that we've done um, in the past years. Uh, it has been updated to include up to early 2020. Unfortunately, the past year and a half, we haven't been able to do the educational programs that we used to do because of COVID. Uh, the particular program that you can see here is the Circular Economy and Blue Economy program that we do. I will talk a little bit more about this uh, as we go ahead. Um, Basically, I'm not going to go into the terms so much. I wasn't uh, aware of the level of recognition of the terms. Um, however, um, what Blue Cycle does is a combination of blue and circular economy. So a circular economy basically means that we take the principle that we do not have finite resources. Um, so we try to design the waste out of our system. This basically means, in a very simple terms that I, I like to use, is that waste is generally, a, it's a design flaw. Uh, there shouldn't be the waste that there is. Um, so this is one of the main criteria that we use when we are uh, for, for the whole uh, way the Blue Cycle works. Uh, all of these are the categories that fall under the uh, Blue Economy Principles. Uh, we are mostly, let's say, in the category of coastal and environmental protection, as well as aquaculture um, uh, industries, let's say. Um, and what we're dealing with is ghost nets, mostly ghost nets, as well as other types of plastic. But we will be talking about ghost nets because they have the worst environmental impact. Uh, ghost nets are nets that are lost at sea. Um, Either they are improperly discarded of, uh, or they're just simply um, forgotten, and it's very difficult for them to, to be collected. Unfortunately, it is the worst, uh, it's the most deadly environmental, it's the most deadly plastic waste that um, is currently in the sea uh, for various reasons. As you can see, uh, these are real examples which uh, mammals are very often caught in. 
uh, and they continue fishing for many years. That's why they're called basically ghosts because nobody knows that they're there, uh, but the harm that they do is very big. Uh, in numbers, we can see that more than 640,000 tons are lost every year. And um, the great garbage patch is made out of almost half of it is made out of plastic waste. Um, on a more local level in the EU, um, more than 80% uh, is uh, plastic of marine litter, which is found in European beaches, out of which 27% is fishing and shipping related. However, only 1.5% of this is actually recycled. The way it began uh, it was through the Caterina Lascaridis Foundation. Uh, we did, um, sorry, we did a symposium and the production of a film focusing on creating 3D printer filament from ghost nets. Uh, we got, went on with a symposium, which was the first symposium combining blue and circular economies, new technologies, and marine plastic waste, um, out of which an industrial competition took place, which fin was finalized in 2019. A blue cycle was launched, and up to today, we have collected approximately 255 tons of uh, plastic, it's a combination, though it's not only from ghost nets, it's a combination of plastic, which is in many cases diverted from the landfill as well. Um, so what we do is uh, we recycle plastic fishing and shipping equipment using a holistic approach. Uh, the holistic approach is um, a three-pronged approach, the material collection, processing, and the creation of the final product. Uh, we rely on current research technologies in order for us to, to be helped to solve the marine plastic waste problem. Uh, the nets that you can see, the pictures that you can see here, are normal fishing nets, aquaculture nets, as well as ropes. These are all made out of high quality uh, plastic. Uh, and our basic aim is for this to be reintroduced um, in the industry, forming a perfect uh, circular economy example. Uh, we have a network all over Greece currently. These are our main five sources. So we have collection points uh, which we have set up around Greece. Uh, we work with NGOs that have set up their own collection systems. Um, we work with manufacturers of shipping and fishing gear, uh, mussel farms and aquaculture farms, and coastal and marine cleanups of collaborating institutions and NGOs, and as well as underwater cleanups. Um, this is the, what the network currently looks like. Uh, it's expanding. Uh, we've added a few points since this map was made, actually, um, for collection points, as well as some cleanups that have taken place. I uh, will not go through the, the point by point. However, it's good to note that uh, these numbers were uh, our November numbers. We had 193 tons. Uh, you can see that many uh, pickups have been delayed due to COVID, unfortunately, and closures. Um, but it's a quite uh, indicative number of the amounts of waste that exist um, and currently are either uh, rotting at the side of the ports. As you can see here, these are some examples of uh, materials that we have collected. Um, the top right image is very common for Greece, unfortunately, where there are no facilities. Uh, for these um, for these nets, these are the most commonly used nets. Greece is the largest fishing count country in the EU for these types of uh, fishing trawling nets. On the bottom left here, we can see mussel farms, which uh, they have basically just thrown their nets out, uh, and these just say in um, these are close to Thessaloniki, uh, and they just uh, rot uh, until they're collected eventually by in many cases, not very, not very often. Um, one of our locations in uh, Athens where we collect the ropes, and this is one of our instances of collecting the marine plastic waste from underwater as well. Uh, unfortunately, there's no European categorization or global categorization for the condition of waste that is collected from the sea. So we have made our own um, category system uh, these are the categories that we currently use based on the type of material that we collect. Um, we have almost excellent condition. Uh, we have pre-consumer but medium condition material. We have post-consumer waste, um, which is used but it's in a good condition. Uh, degradation detected in the material. 
um, and then maximum degradation, um, which we have found uh, in, in many of these cases, many of these plastics. Uh, the processing that is done in-house, uh, the types of plastic are quite common. It's quite um, notable that we don't, uh, you, we don't um, recycle at all single-use plastics. We only do uh, hard plastics, what they're called. Uh, quite importantly, we, we keep all materials separated by type and by state. Um, this is quite uh, time consuming and labor consuming. However, this uh, is the only way to achieve the highest possible quality of materials. Uh, the material is then shredded and cleaned. We have our own uh, zero discharge washing system. Uh, this is a brief example of the way that this works. Um, Image number one, you can see what it looks like after a simple uh, wash, shredded, and then washed to what the material finally looks like. Uh, another example of the way that we wash the materials, this is the aquaculture nets that you can see going from the dirty um, side to the cleaner side, which is the left side. These are 100% nylon. Uh, it results in very high humidity, of course, after they've been washed. So we have our own purpose-built drying room for this. Uh, these are our latest examples of uh, the processing stages. Um, for the aquaculture nets, we have washed as well as turned it into filament. These are the nylon nets from the fishermen, and they have been extruded. And uh, we have made a 3D printer filament, which is um, ready to go on sale quite soon actually uh, these are poly polyethylene uh, muscle farm nets uh, muscle farm bags actually these are 100 percent polyester which are used in injection we have uh, successfully uh, used it in molds uh, and again for the white this is exactly the same so the conditions would be the same uh, regarding the processing um, we have a specialized center, uh, which is the only center in Greece for the treatment and recycling of marine plastic waste. Um, we use cutting edge technology using a large or scale 3D printing robotic lab. Um, this is a place for people who want to have ideas and who want to um, explore their ideas further when it comes to developing solutions for the marine plastic waste program. Um, all of our products are recyclable as well as traceable. So we know where the material has come from and we can follow the stream from where it's been collected to the final um, product. Uh, these are some very quick examples of some things that we have done in this past year. You can see one of the collection stations in Faros, uh, one of the Greek islands where the material is collected. It is shredded and washed, dried, and then turned into filament. Um, we can see here the material that has come from the rope factories, which is then made into pellets, uh, as well as the nylon materials from the aquaculture nets uh, is turned into yarn. Our main uh, product lines are 3D printer filament, which is, as I said, is going to be going on sale quite soon. Pellets, which is the main uh, reason uh, for Blue Cycle is to be able to return pellets into the plastic industry. Uh, 3D printer furniture of a large scale, production of uh, pilot production for the yarn, and we have a pilot production for tiling and building materials for architectural applications. Uh, our furniture is, um, it has a minimum content of 60% marine plastic waste. It has been collected from around, as we said, from around Greece. Um, it is a customizable solution. Um, and we use this as an example to show that uh, recycled plastic can take the place of uh, high uh, aesthetic value plastic items. Um, we've been quite happy that uh, these particular designs have been awarded these years, some uh, this past year, some very prestigious awards, which are a recognition of uh, what Blue Cycle is trying to do. Um, we continue uh, raising awareness uh, and doing our training in, um, in the Blue Cycle Lab currently. So we do, uh, well, not currently with the lockdown. However, as you can see, these are um, 2020 and uh, 2021, early 21, sorry, 2020 uh, visits. 
uh, where we um, show films that raise awareness on plastic waste. We uh, discuss the process, we share ideas and basically do a tour of uh, the facilities and the whole process. Uh, it helps for many people to understand exactly what the steps are and how we use a sustainable approach. Uh, so these are some of the visits that we're hoping to be able to continue again, uh, which unfortunately have now been put on hold. Um, so the next steps, basically, we try to involve all stakeholders uh, on a government, industry and local level. Now, we, we want to highlight to the industry uh, the properties, the high quality properties of this material um, in order for it to no longer be seen as a waste material. Um, and we, of course, apply circular economy principles at every stage of the process. And therefore, our next goal is to continue this research and to be able to produce higher quality materials to optimize the three-step blue cycle approach and hopefully take it to uh, a European level as well uh, and create the creation of smaller blue cycle labs at key harbors. Uh, we have a constantly expanding network of partners, including um, aquaculture farms, mussel farms, uh, various makers, um, as well as municipalities that want to join and because they don't have facilities for the collection of this waste. Um, and uh, that is about it. These are our socials if you would like to follow along. Um, I hope you found it useful and uh, to the point. And that's about it, I think. And now I can Thank you very much. Thank you I very, very much. That was really interesting. interesting. Okay, we live in Greece and we're not aware of these beautiful things that you do. Uh, I'm going to ask Nefeli if there is any question from the audience, otherwise I have one question. But first, let's check what the participants say. Nefeli, do we have a question on the chat? No, we do not have a question. Okay, in that case, do you mind, Ms. Lascaridis, if I ask something? Um, no, I know the answer, of course. <laughs> great, great. Okay, I have, an, I have a question. These activities that you do, do you actually um, speak to children about uh, circular economy and do they express any interest in terms of, you know, uh, having a career on this subject? Because if uh, I was a well, teenager, I would definitely be interested in doing something like that. Uh, well, I will tell you what we find is quite interesting. We have uh, a series of smaller um, educational programs that we currently, because uh, of COVID, we send them to the schools. Mm -hmm. So we have like an electronic format. Um, okay. And what we have noticed, and we have discussions with various schools as well, is that there is an increased in interest uh, in blue economy in general, because Greece is a country with a very large, uh, let's say, variety of uh, companies that are involved in blue economy. Mm -hmm. um, so as we saw in also in the slide that I showed with all of the ideas of what uh, blue economy yes. is, um, Greece is involved in all of them. So, okay. well, maybe not all of them, all of them, but at but least in eight them. out of okay. 10 of them, uh, Greece is a very active country. So as long as there is an, an increased awareness about all of these sectors, um, we do see that there is an interest in um, combining it, of course, with uh, what this means for the environment and what this means for the society and what this means for a sustainable future as well. So we do see an interest. Um, yeah. It might not be fully streamlined or it might be uh, coming from one industry or the other, but there is an increased interest definitely uh, in the past few years as well. Okay, and I have another question because I give the floor to the next panelist. Um, let's say that you you have developed so many different uh, educational activities for students, but uh, what is the the youngest student that can participate in these activities, starting from the age of twelve, let's say, or even younger? Um, no, no, we have uh, we start from uh, the first grade. We have. Uh, uh, for all uh, six uh, grades, well, 12 grades um, mm -hmm. in the Katarina Lascaridis Foundation, each are specifically made with each uh, classroom in mind. So uh -huh. each age group in mind. This is how we do it at the foundation. In Blue Cycle, we have uh, three separate age groups. So we have one age group, which is five to seven. Uh, then we have oh, another age group, which is eight to 12. And then we have another age group, which is 12 to 18 to 17 basically okay 
So okay. The forty seventeen is mostly the let's say uh, it basically looks quite like the one that you saw, uh, which mm -hmm. is the adult version, let's say, uh, okay. of the presentation of the activities. The others are um, more playful and they have to do with more creation uh, for mm -hmm. the younger ages as well. Uh, but these are the three main uh, pillars of how these are separated. Okay, I understand. I understand. If I can uh, comment just a bit, I would just say that if things were uh, otherwise and we didn't have this COVID challenge in front of us, uh, visiting your foundation would be a nice thing to um, to engage students in order to create and develop a blue school project because That's you true. you've well, done you've done the baseline. Because, uh, we have normally hundreds of children every day from uh, more than uh, six schools visiting every day. And unfortunately, oh, it's been quite a quiet time for us without all the yes, children there. I know. But we are hoping that uh, things will change soon. Yes, we do hope that to happen. Thank you so much again for being Thank here. You, you can stay welcome. until the end Hi. of the webinar, of course. Irini, Irini, yes. we have two questions for uh, Ms. Lascaridis. Oh, yes. Um, we have the first question is from uh, Carla Carico. I, I, I hope I pronounced it. Uh, correctly. So the question is, where can we find the machine that transforms plastic into 3D uh, filament? We thought we have read about its existence, but it's true. Oh no, it is true. Uh, these machines do exist. It is not something new, uh, the creation of um, uh, filament. There are particular types of machinery that do exactly this. Uh, however, of course, uh, as with all machinery, you can find um, like very low quality uh, material or you, uh, machinery, or you can find a, extremely high uh, uh, quality and competent machinery. I think it's pretty similar for every type of machinery. It's not a, it's not an entirely new concept. Okay, and the second question is from Ms. Natasha Kazadzidou. Do you see an interest for the teachers to learn more themselves about blue economy? Um, I think uh, I see from, from various schools that we have discussed, some schools have put into their curriculum um, the study of uh, the United Nations Sustainability Goals. So based uh, around these uh, particular goals, mostly goals that have to do with the sea or mostly goals that have to do with innovation, um, in many cases, uh, they are, let's say, married between the two. So uh, this is combined, uh, circular economy is presented in, uh, let's say, forum of the UN Sustainability Goals. Um, generally, it's quite unfortunate that, especially in Greece, that has a huge, um, it's so it's surrounded by the sea and it lives by the sea and it can it has so much to offer the sea has so much to offer from a professional point of view there is definitely a lack of awareness and i think this is something that uh, schools should be more aware of as well how important uh you know the professional um everything ha the sea has to offer professionally as well for these students in the future there is a very big lack of awareness about this Thank you. We have one more question from uh, Ms. Pamela Ernstberger. Uh, have you done any outreach work focused from the river to the sea approach? No, we haven't done uh, actually, um, not in, uh, uh, in Greece, we haven't done so. Um, <clears throat> we're not currently planning on doing so because we try to, uh, well, at least the materials that we use, uh, which are different than uh, single-use plastics that are very uh, commonly found from river to the sea approach. The plastics that we uh, normally um, work with, we try to intercept them before uh, they even get to that stage. So um, the aquaculture farms, for example, that we work that in some cases are located um, in uh, uh, central Greece, uh, we take the material directly from them, so we don't do research depending on the way that uh, enters the river stream. Thank you. We do not have any more questions. Thank you. Okay, so now um, if I can see Miss Labrini from... Um, yes, 
Yes, it's Miss Grigori from Astipale Island. Hello, Labrini. Nice to see you again. Hello, nice to see you too. I'm very glad that I am here. We are too. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mrs. Okay. Mrs. Grigori, do you want me to share your presentation or do you want to share it from your computer? No, I would prefer for you to share the, the presentation. Thank you. You can now start. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is uh, Labrini Grigori. I'm the headmaster of the gymnasium of Astipalea. Uh, Astipalea is a small island of Totecanis. Uh, you can see it here inside the, the circle. Uh, it is very close to, to Kos, uh, Amorgos and uh, Kalimnos. Um, and it has about 1,200 uh, inhabitants, residents. Uh, it is it is quite small, but it is uh, it is very active, a very active island. Uh, we can move on to the next. The next one. Yes, the next one. Thank you very much. Uh, here you can see uh, Astipala, the shape of Astipala. It looks like a butterfly. Uh, that's why it is called the butterfly of the of the Aegean. Um, the next one, please. Uh, here is a picture of our island. So you can see the Venetian castle on the top and the windmills. This is the central square of, uh, of our island. And here is the main entrance of, uh, of our school. Um, I thought that an introduction of our island and our school is, is very important. Uh, before going to, to the projects and talking about the projects that our school uh, is engaged uh, with. Uh, yes, we can move on. These are some, uh, some pictures of, uh, of our school. Uh, this is the main schoolyard and this is the view from uh, my office. Uh, you can see that we are very blessed to live on an island uh, like this. And we move on to the, to the next one. Uh, you can see some, uh, some pictures uh, from inside the, the school. Uh, we have a lot of pictures uh, of famous uh, painters, uh, both the Greek painters and, uh, and foreign ones. Uh, I would like you to have the, the overall picture of, uh, of our school, our small school. And the next one. Here are, yes, uh, the pictures I told you about. This is a place where all the celebrations and the festivals uh, are held. Uh, this is the soul of our school. Unfortunately, now uh, it is not available because of uh, the COVID restrictions. Uh, so it is, uh, it, it, it is very, uh, it feels very lonely. <laughs> Let's move on to the sector, to the next one. Thank you. Here is uh, our class. Uh, this is how we call it. We have the computers in this class and uh, uh, our students do projects uh, using uh, the equipment, the technical equipment. And the next one. And now we move on to the projects that are uh, done in, uh, in our school, that take place in our school. Uh, this project uh, was, uh, uh, was a last year's uh, project. It is called Fish Forward. It is a pan-European project. Uh, it has 17 partners in 17 countries that participate. And it is uh, organized and coordinated uh, by WWF here in Greece. Uh, so we decided that we wanted to participate in this project. Uh, we firstly notified the parents uh, about the project, encouraging them to participate, uh, because it was really important for us uh, parents to be a part of it. Uh, our school children started a small research uh, concerning uh, overfishing because this project uh, has as a basic aim uh, to talk about fish consumption uh, and uh, the impacts 
the social and environmental impacts uh, of fish consumption. Uh, so they did a small research about the causes, the effects and the solutions concerning overfishing. They, stu they studied scientific articles, uh, they visited uh, w uh, WWF's official website, they watched movies concerning overfishing and sea protection, uh, so they gathered a lot of, infor uh, of information. Uh, we had a great support uh, from the part of uh, WWF, and uh, the kids made questionnaires addressing the local fishermen, uh, both amateurs and professionals, and the owners of fish restaurants, in order to talk about fish consumption and see their opinions uh, about this uh, subject. Uh, we can move on to the next one. Uh, so, uh, our kids came also in contact uh, with the scientific director of Archipelagos. Uh, this is an institute of marine conservation uh, here in Greece. And I must admit that uh, this, uh, this uh, organization does a very good uh, job. Uh, they realized the, uh, the, the, the need to protect the biodiversity of the Aegean. Uh, through conservation act actions and community engagement. The basic thing for the kids were to engage uh, their parents and to engage the community uh, to these projects. Um, they talked also to marine ecologists of the Department of Marine Sciences of the University of the Aegean. This was a very interesting talk. And they made an outline of their basic actions. Uh, as I aforementioned, their, uh, their most important goal was not to keep the project inside the school walls. Uh, they wanted to spread the word uh, and engage the whole uh, local uh, community. Next one, please. Uh, they also talked uh, to the local authorities about the problem of overfishing and they suggested uh, solutions as far as uh, sustainable fishing is concerned. Uh, they also talked to the mayor um, and presented uh, their project. Um, they started interviewing local fishermen and uh, seafood restaurant owners, and they, they also proposed recipes uh, using low-demand fish, because uh, most of the recipes um, uh, were based on, on uh, popular fish, uh, as, um, if I may say it. Uh, so they proposed something, something different. Uh, they handed out seafood guides and uh, relevant material, and they also proposed a restaurant uh, fish, uh, fish week. Uh, this hasn't been, um, uh, it hasn't been done yet uh, because of the circumstances, but maybe sometime in the future, we hope that uh, uh, it will be, yes, it will be realized. Uh, a poster also was created. Uh, this poster uh, had as a title, Astipala, a fish-friendly island. We think this is a, a quite catchy, if I may say, slogan. And they gave uh, the chance also to their classmates uh, to calculate the carbon footprints of their favorite seafood. Uh, so they played the game, and we saw that through gamification, uh, the kids uh, learned a lot of things about fish consumption. Um, and uh, this was really fun. Um, and they played uh, in groups, trying to score uh, the lowest carbon footprint. This was the goal. Uh, next one, please. As you can see here, there are some pictures of the kids uh, going out and talking to the local fishermen uh, at the port of Astipalia, and also talking to fish, uh, fish uh, restaurant owners. Uh, stating their opinions and uh, handing out uh, uh, questionnaires, talking about fish consumption. Um, next one, please. Here is the poster uh, I told you about, Astipale Fish Friendly Island. Uh, and we had an, inspi an inspiration uh, from uh, the Byzantine uh, Museum. Uh, we, we found some, in, some information there, and also from uh, EFCA, the European Fisheries Control Agency. Uh, the um, um, logo of European Fisheries Control Agency uh, has uh, so, some stars uh, inside it. So you, we use the stars from EFCA, and uh, we took the fish 
from an oil lamp that we found in the museum. And so uh, this, uh, this poster came, came to life. Uh, we used some uh, elements from different, uh, uh, different, uh, from different things. And you can see them afterwards. Next one, please. Uh, so this is uh, what I was talking about, uh, about EFCA. Uh, we took the stars and put them into the poster. And the next one, this is the oil lamp uh, from the museum that we found. And we used also this fish uh, inside, inside the poster. That we, we think that it is quite imaginative and the kids were, really liked it. And then we move on to our uh, next uh, project. This project, uh, this project is uh, a project that, is, uh, uh, that started this year, uh, this school year. Uh, our school children participate in Daphne. Daphne is a network of sustainable Greek islands and its basic aim is to strengthen island local governance, governance sorry, and help islands um, uh, become a sustainable uh, development, uh, development paradigm. Uh, and uh, this network counts uh, 54 members, uh, of which 50 island uh, municipalities and the regions of North, North Aegean and South Aegean, uh, Ionian Islands, and the Regional Union of Municipalities of uh, the, the Ionian Islands. And this year's uh, project um, aims at the Sustainable Development Goal 6. Uh, this concerns clean water and uh, sanitation. Uh, so we thought that uh, we would like to suggest uh, a, a project uh, concerning rainwater harvesting because we think that this is, uh, this is really uh, important for our islands. Uh, Arstipala, for example, uh, doesn't have uh, enough rain, and at some point we, have, uh, we had water problems. So water management is, uh, is a great issue uh, for, our islands, uh, for our islands. So we thought about rainwater harvesting, and um, uh, the kids uh, talked to their grandparents, to their mothers or fathers, and uh, in the past, uh, here in Stipale, we used to have wells uh, in order to collect the rainwater and use it for uh, planting, uh, for, uh, sorry, for watering the plants or the trees uh, or washing um, uh, clothes. Uh, so we think that this is a good idea um, for rain, rainwater harvesting to become more modern, uh, to have systems more modern. Uh, uh, always uh, thinking about the past, uh, and how things were done in the past. Uh, because if, if we forget our past, we can't move on to the future. So we, we think that this is really important. Next, next, please. Uh, we also participate in a program. This is uh, coordinated uh, by WWF. Uh, and we decided, uh, our students decided to adapt a local beach uh, this local beach is called Livadi and is, it is situated at the southwest part uh, of our island. Uh, so they decided uh, to adapt this beach. Uh, this is one of our, our central beaches uh, and uh, visit this beach to, uh, at least three or four times a year and collect some data. They have a data card and they record what they find. Uh, so this information are going to be very useful for us and they are going to become an important tool in order to determine the focus areas uh, for our future uh, pollution preventing uh, programs. And this is a project that uh, started uh, this, uh, this school year also. So it isn't completed yet. Mm -hmm. Next one, please. And last but not least, uh, we have the Ice Shrink uh, project. <laughs> Uh, we are together in this project with, uh, with Irene. I'm very, I'm very glad, and Tidek. I'm very glad that I am a part of it. Uh, it is an Erasmus Plus project, and the main goal is to connect island schools uh, with one another, and we are going to work together and tackle certain uh, sustainability challenges. Uh, and this is uh, of, of great importance because islands uh, with common problems come together and they deal with uh, sustainability problems, common sustainability problems, and uh, 
uh, we are very we are very glad to do that uh, and maybe we can find some uh, some solutions uh, in the future and talk to policymakers uh, proposing uh, our solutions solutions that come from from the school children and this is the most important thing um, the schools of the Uter in Netherlands and the Gymnasium of Astipalia are going to be responsible for pilot, uh, pilot testing, uh, tackling common sustainability challenges, and also other schools participate. Uh, one school that I can't, I, I can't pronounce, <laughs> as most of us can, I suppose, in Northern Iceland, is going to participate too. And other schools are going to participate uh, while we, we move along. Uh, it's a very inspirational uh, progr program and project, and we're very glad to be to be part of it. Uh, before um, uh, moving moving forward, I would like to say that uh, unfortunately, um, our curriculum in Greek schools is very is very strict, uh, at least in public uh, in public schools. Uh, so we don't have uh, distinct lessons. Uh, talking about uh, the, the environment, about sustainability uh, goals. Uh, so all these things are done uh, as extracurricular activities. Uh, and I, I, I ought to say a thank you to, to school children that participate because they, uh, they don't have a, a lot of free time, uh, but they would like to offer this free, free time uh, in order to become environmentally uh, friendly in order to become uh, ecologically alert, uh, and I think this is uh, this is something that we should uh, it it should be noticed. Uh, and uh, I, I had to to make a, a reference, uh, if I may say, to to, to this. Um, I think that uh, I covered everything. <laughs> uh, thank you for so. your I attention. Thank you for your attention. I hope that you enjoyed the presentation. We did. We, we definitely, did. definitely did. Thanks a lot. Nafeli? Nafeli? Yes, give me a second to see if we have a question. Well, during the time of the checking, I may say that I would like to be uh, a student in your school because it seems to so fun to make all this project and. Uh, yeah, I'm from Brittany. Uh, from my background, I I had a, a class, a C class once, but uh, I'm not doing at all those kind of project, and it's very interesting and uh, I think involving for our students. Also, the, the things that you were saying, uh, talking about the island governance and so on. I think those kind of things are really what we would like to have in in our pro school uh, projects. So thank you for sharing. Thanks a lot. Thanks uh, for your kind words. Uh, we try uh, to do to do our best, uh, and I think all all teachers uh, are trying to do the, the same thing. Uh, and even if we are not offered uh, the opportunities to to, to do it, uh, we we make we make the opportunities. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Grigori, um, we have a comment from uh, Ms. Polixeni Kutsilieri, who says, congratulations, great job, and amazing school premises. And we have a question from uh, Ms. Hrisanthi Kokoli. Where could we find financial help for these kind of projects? Financial help, yes. Uh, the truth is that we didn't have any, any financial uh, support. Uh, for, for example, um, okay, the Ice Rink project is a project, is an Erasmus Plus project, so uh, we have a financial uh, support doing this project. But the other, the other ones uh, that I aforementioned uh, is done only uh, with, our, uh, with, our, with our support. Um, I don't know if I, I have answered the, the question. We don't have uh, any more questions. Okay. Okay. If I may say something before I give the floor to to Turkey's partner and his team, I would like to say, of course, a huge thanks 
thanks to Labrini for uh, being here with us uh, today and sharing some wonderful pictures from her uh, really picturesque island we wish to, to visit one day. Uh, what I would like to say is that uh, one of the great benefits of uh, being involved in Erasmus Plus projects is that, uh, of course, you meet excellent people and interesting people and people that you are so lucky to to work with. Uh, you also have the, um, the ability to travel, which is great because Europe is amazing. But one thing that I would like to highlight is the fact that uh, when we work with partners from other countries, we have the opportunity to realize that we share common goals and we are facing the same challenges. For example, in Icering project, we've realized that the, the, the problem, if I may say so, of uh, composite schools, which means having one teacher dealing with a variety of ages in the primary level, is a common one for many, many countries around Europe. And at the beginning, I thought that it was only something that Greece was facing. But no, it's a, it's a common challenge in Europe. And of course, as you can see in this webinar that we talk and we present the information about blue economy, one thing is for sure that there are a lot of stakeholders that are doing an amazing job, like uh, Ms. Lascaridi shared before. And um, these webinars are uh, excellent opportunities for you to learn about initiatives and uh, things and activities that are implemented in our country or in partners' countries. And thank you for that. Uh, okay, now, uh, Labrini, you can stay with us if you want, and we can move to Engin Zengiz from Turkey, from Antalya, uh, and uh, his team. First of all, we have uh, Zuhai with us. Hello, Zuhai. <laughs> How's Geldinis? <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. It's really great to be here. And also great thanks to our attendees. They are still following us late in the evening. Uh, it's great pleasure to be with you. But uh, as you said, uh, it was great pleasure also because uh, I have got many ideas from the presentations and thanks for the great presentations. Uh, Engin? You want to jump? Yeah. yeah. Yes, okay. Uh, I'm very happy that you are here and you will be uh, introducing us e evening portal and what our teachers have done. Yeah. Uh, is it okay to share my screen? Yes, please, okay. Zuhai. Give me a second. Give me okay. A second. Okay, so as we said screen. before, uh, Zuhai is here to present us the, the we Twinning platform for those that don't have access uh, because e Twinning platform is only for teachers and students. But now we have the, the chance to see it ourselves. Thank you for that. Yeah, uh, let's talk about e Twinning before that. e Twinning is the uh, biggest European school net program and all teachers and schools are engaged in that program. Here in Antalya, we have 10 uh, schools. Can you see my screen? This is the home page. Yes, yes, we can see your screen. You can see, okay. This is the home page of the uh, eTwinning platform. Here we collaborate with our teachers uh, and we are waiting for other teachers also. Here, uh, let's before, let me take it there. It's easier. Let's minimize them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have to put this forward. Okay. Here. Uh, you see the home page, and we are 14 teachers and 70, 70 uh, students here. Our teachers has presented, prepared the intro.
Etimining platform is an online platform, and here we uh, the mostly we consider the pedagogy of the uh, blue school economies and how to be integrated into uh, our curriculum. Here uh, you can see the pages that are prepared by our teachers, and we use animators, animations for teachers. And we are waiting for our colleagues from other countries to present themselves. Yeah, you see. Yeah. And students also prepare their avatars. And as the e-security, we uh, found the nicknames, let them find a nickname and present them as their, with their nicknames. You see. Here they have created their avatars, and you see our schools here from countries. We have nine here from Turkey, and we have task distribution. What are we going to do? We decided for the project, and here, especially, I want to. Yeah, you see project posters that are created by our schools. As I can see, Zuha, you're using Padlet here, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, we okay. use many technology. The same screen, the same screen uh, with waves. <laughs> That's why I'm yeah, recording. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to send you the link and you can share whatever, whatever you like. Great. And also Thank for you very the events. Yeah, and also for the events uh, we choose from the project. And we created first uh, the Oh, yeah, yeah, you see. Project plan, lesson plan, how to be applied it. Yeah, you see the goals, skills, and subjects, and description of the activities and strategies, something like that. We created before, and then. Uh, These lesson plans, uh, excuse me, Zura, These lesson yeah. plans are for intellectual output three. Yeah. Uh, which is Portuguese is leading. And the, uh, our e twinner teachers prepared the games, the activities on e twinning and also they prepare lesson plans for each activity. For and each activity. Yes. And as you can see, if I interrupt myself um, a little bit, this lesson plan is based on uh, the lesson plan that I have presented before, and it is already included in the guide for teachers. So all goes together now yeah uh, well Irene, no uh, in intellectual output too we have made the plan earlier and i have sent it to you these plans are prepared just two weeks ago for intellectual no, no, output no. I, I didn't mean the particular lesson plan i mean the yeah. format the general format yes, yes. the general yeah. template is based on the one that i presented before in the teacher's guide yeah okay. yeah we use we use the pre yeah that part and uh, we also, uh, we just fill in what are we going to do and use it as a temple. Yes, right. Here, uh, we contributed, we produced um, e-Excel and everybody write their names and students' names. And we produced mixed school teams. And from each school, uh, two students work together and they collaborate with each other and produce their work here for example the example of it yeah you see yes how did they imply the games here also another activity let's see for example blue passport you see also there is another working plan and we created uh, classes and every avatar from these classes came here they are these students they created their own uh, avatars and created virtual class and they work here together and they use word art and produce their blue passport 
Yeah, you see it. All the values from Antalya, they are used. Draw something like that, let's pass there. And Minecraft game will be uh, presented by our teacher. So I pass it. For example, there's a hunt game. Also, you see for every activity, we use lesson plans, how to apply, it's written here and the team has created for each activity and each students from different schools collaborate together. And we use, for example, here, Action Bound, and they play this game and enjoyed it a lot. Here you can see their pictures. Yeah, you see these people uh, working with Action Bound. Uh, I'm not sure, have you ever tried it? But it's a very exciting game for both of us and for teenagers also. And let's pass. For every event, we created each page and uh, we use web tools and web tool tools and create lesson plans and applied it in our for with our students. Escape board is coming because of internet, it may be loaded. Yeah, Minecraft education will be coming from Gusha, I think. Yeah, library is coming. And these are the students while they're working. And the attempts you can see. Uh, these are the links that are that can be embedded anywhere you like. We can use it also in our uh, Blue School web page uh, that can be accessible. Yeah. And if our teachers from other countries come here and present, uh, collaborate with our with our teachers and students. Also, they can share and apply this e-twinning project. And while we finish this e-twinning project, we also apply to e-twinning quality label. This is important for teachers and for students because they are going to be uh, labeled by the uh, European Commission, and it is uh, important for schools and for teachers also. At the end of the project, we are going to apply it. I think that's all. Do you have any question? Zuhal, uh, uh, can you please uh, go one uh, lesson, I mean, or game? Lesson plan? No, no, I mean, uh, let's go 3D, developing 3D projects related to the sea, for example. And what can students do and what can students learn in this activity? And what teachers or partner teachers from Estonia, Italy or Portugal need to do? Can you please explain more in detail? Yeah. Uh, for example, let's come to here. Hunt game. Uh, from this game, uh, here the lesson plan you see, and the aim of the game. Uh, is it the right plan? Yeah, here goes understand the impact of overfishing sea creatures and learn about uh, endangered sea creatures, what can be there. And skills, what are we going to get? Become aware of the uh, responsibilities. Uh, refresh uh, math mathematical knowledge and then providing recipes and calculating codes with the seafood. Yeah, and students will search and find the secrets of the sea. 
these are the skills that students will get and the description of the activity students are given general information about sea for example fishing tourism and marine history uh, then a game created using uh, appropriate web two tools here uh, they used as i said action bound here and in the game there will be uh, sections that contain some missions and they are optional questions so students will uh, get engaged to the game and get the idea of the uh, sea and what are we going to do and strategies methods can be worked uh, individually or as a team this can be do uh, charge your phone battery fully because it is important because we are using web two tools so the app is important and uh, while uh, playing this game you should be online and you scan a QR code for the start of the game and the app will install you and uh, you can change all the instructions all the questions and that instructions let you to find uh, the end and uh, they design how to uh, get your aim yeah, to finish the game, you must find the hidden QR code. Uh, watch out for the clues, then you finish the game. This is the uh, basic uh, framework of the game. Yeah. Yeah, any questions? Um, uh, we have first a comment from uh, Carla Carico. Uh, it says, congrats on the presentation. Great work have been done by students. And we have a question from Anne Solen Gourdon. Is it still possible to join the program? Uh, if you're a teacher, you can join. But if you're not a teacher, you can still join. But uh, as the visitor, you can be you can see what is going on in that platform uh, but uh, if you're a teacher we recommend you to uh, create your account on eTwinning and get engaged in this project so that you can apply for the eTwinning quality labels after the project we don't have any more questions Thank okay. You. Okay. Thank you, Zuhai. Thank you so much thank for uh, navigating us uh, uh, through this platform because uh, it was a, a unique opportunity. We're not teachers, so we don't have access to that. Um, I was wondering, and Gin, whether um, Yunes, if I say correctly, uh, she can uh, join and uh, present the Minecraft game. Is it possible yes, for her to yes, do so? Yes, Gretchen is here. Now she can present. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, let's see her. Do we see her? Yes, Who is I, now Mary, the... I think you you wrote her name as Engin Jengis again. So please make No, your... I didn't. I remember that I did that correctly. But anyway, we cannot fix it right now. <laughs> and if any, there might be two and gins and gees as panelists. Yes. She she's on the top list. She is the first. So maybe yes. can we invite her somehow? I made her a presenter. Yes. Okay. Come on, come about them. Hi. Hello. Hello. How's Gail Denis? Memnum Oldum. Oh, çok teşekkürler. <laughs> okay, so uh, I will have to say a few things in uh, in English. Um, Yunes is is here today to present the Minecraft game for us. She doesn't speak English, so Engin will do the translation as I don't speak Turkish very well. But uh, in any case, uh, we would like to welcome her and uh, see how how many interesting things she has to share. Thank you. Engin hocam, hocam kayran şartlarınızı sizin merakla bekliyorum diyor. Ee, Emin'in çok güzel şeyler öğreneceğiz. Ee, buyurun ben şeyinizi yapacağım. 
E, ben ekranı paylaşmak istiyorum ama nereden paylaşacağım emin değilim. E, hocam az önce paylaşmışsınız galiba orada. Bakın bir turunculuk Tekrar. işareti var. E, mikrofon var, kamera var. Onun altında ekran paylaşımı var. Hmm, tek şu mu değil. E, burasına çalışmayacağı böyle oluyor. Tamam şimdi oldu paylaşıldı. Tamam. E, e, oyun açtığım zaman Evet, beni uyarırsanız oyun açtığınız, açtığınız zaman sevinirim. Görüyor musunuz şu an? Yes, we see you. Evet, görüyoruz. Tamam. E, Minecraft Education baktığımızda sadece e, Türkiye'de değil, e, dünyada da önemli bir yer kaplamaya başladı. Oyunlaştırarak öğrenme bizim için çok önemli. Minecraft is very popular in Turkey, also in all over the world. It is getting more and more important. Uh, because it is teaching children through gamification, through game. Türkiye'de de Microsoft e, seçtiği bin öğretmene Minecraft Education eğitimi verdi ve bu konuda uzman olmamız için e, bir aylık bir eğitime tabi tutulduk. Uh, Microsoft gave uh, to 1000 teacher in Turkey uh, training to be expert in the uh, Minecraft game and uh, she is one of these trainer. Bunun sonucunda da bize hem uzmanlık hem de eğiticilik sertifikalarımız verildi. Aynı zamanda size selamları da var Minecraft Education'ın Türkiye temsilcileri bakımından. Çok yakından takip ediyorlar projemizi. Bunu da belirtmek isterim. And Minecraft uh, office is following our Blue School projects in a very close way. And they are greeting all the participants here. Oyunda iki tane paket seçeneği sundum öğrencilerimize. E, oyun size İngilizce olarak değiştirme seçeneğiyle gelecek. Um, we can change the language of the game. This is Turkish now, but we can choose. And we have two options for the game. She, she invent, I mean, she made up the game in two ways. E, macera paketimiz ve yaratıcı. Ben şimdi hızlı olabilmek için yaratıcı modu istiyorum. One is, one is creative, creative. And hocam bir daha geri döner misiniz? One tamam. yaratıcı, one is uh, creative and the second is uh, survivor. Uh, adventure, survivor, let's say survivor. survivor. Evet. İkisinden de keyif alacaklarına inanıyorum. Um, şimdi baktığımızda uh, uh, item girl'lerimiz var. Uh, bunlara tıkladığımızda uh, bir İngilizce olarak neden burada olduğumuzu görüyoruz. Amacımız şu, e, Antalya bölgesinde de antik kent bakımından önemli bir yer arz etmekte. You will see, you will see the girl, you will see the person's character here and students go with mouse and click on this girl and then uh, informations appear in the screen and students can read it. And this game is for useful project is made up for Side, an uh, ancient site, like very old city, and students can learn the culture and the tourism activities, you know, municipal activities in this ancient site. E, oyunumuza girdiklerinde iki şeye dikkat edecekler. Birinci olarak tarihi yerlerimizi görecekler. E, aynı zamanda turizmin Antalya bölgesi için ne kadar önemli olduğunu, turistlerin ne kadar önemli olduğu hakkında bilgi sahibi olacaklar. Students will learn about Sida, ancient site, how it is important, how it is important for economy and for Antalya. And students will learn in this way. İkinci ayetimiz ise bize oyunda yapmamız gerekenleri söyle. Esasında eğlence kısmı da burası. Öğrencilerin eğlence kısmı ikinci ayetler. And the second character, again, I can girl, when you click on it again uh, she tells you how to play the game bu gördüğünüz yerler yeşil olan yerlere tıkladığınızda yine benim tarafımdan hazırlanan youtube adreslerine yönlendirilecekler ve oradaki when sonları you, da izleyebilirler when, when you click on this green screen then you will go to you will be directed to youtube and then you will watch the movies and presentations prepared by our expert teacher Hemen şöyle döndürelim. Karşımızda bizim için çok önemli olan Sidi'yi temsil eden 
Ne varmış bakalım hemen. And this is the Apollo This is Side and she made up Side with columns from Greek very old ancient Greek style. Aynı zamanda tekrardan belirtmek istiyorum. Aten kızlarımıza tıkladıkları zaman direkt olarak Apollo Tapınağı'nın kendi orijinal halinde görme fırsatları olacak. And when you click on I can girl, I mean the character, then you can see, you can see the original photograph of Apollo template. Bizim için karete karitalar çok önemli. Onlara da yer verdik. Bilgi sahibi olabilirler. There are also karate, karate characters uh, on the, you know, beach. So students can learn also the fauna, I mean the animals, the creatures living in the sea. Ve kum e, e, isimleri neydi? Kum? Lale diye isim geliyor. Hemen bakalım neymiş o zaman. Siz göreceksiniz ekranda. İkinci açtım ekranı görebiliyor musunuz? YouTube. Evet, görünüyor hocam. She clicks on the YouTube and then it goes to YouTube now for more information. Evet, öyle olsun. Hemen. Öğrencilerimiz buradan da. Şu an paylaşım olduğu için biraz yavaş açıyor. Kumlaleleri. Hatırladım. İnternet doesn't open. Okay. Ee, evet. Hocam internet açınca devam ederiz. Aha. O dönemde tamam. tamam. Yeni ekranım geldi değil mi? Oyun ekranı. Geldi. Evet. Engin hocam oyun ekranı geldi mi? Tamam. Ee, aynı zamanda bizim için Athena tapına önemli bilgi buradan alıyoruz. Yine. Students can see the temple of Athens. Athena tapına. Again, click on it. Bir modeli yapıldı. Appear in English. Ve and şimdi biraz uzunca. Öğrencilerimiz isterse kazı çalışması yapabilirler. Students can make dig, you know, for um, you know digging the ground and finding new architectural items in this ancient site. Öğrencilere başta bazı bir hocam duyamıyorum ben sesinizi. Öğrencilerinize başta bazı görevler vermiştik. Bazı neyi toplamaları lazımdı. İkinci ayetten kızımız buna yarıyordu. Zaten hmm, şey açıldı. Pardon, bir dakika. YouTube açıldı da. Ben ayırıyorum. Tamam. Ayırıyorum. Ekran geldi mi? Evet. Engin Hocam ekran geldi mi? Geldi. Tamam. Ee, öğrencilerinize e, bulmaları gereken bazı nesnelerin bilgisi verildi Ayten Görler'de. Bunlardan bir tanesi burada sağ. Bunun dışında gördüklerinizi oyunda oynamak için, kendilerine alan yaratmak için de kullanabilirler. Students go to these boxes you see on the screen. They click on the mouse and they open the boxes and they get the materials which are useful for them and they learn they learn these materials in English and they also know in history these materials how they are important in ancient city in Sida. E, mekanizmalar Minecraft için çok önemlidir. Öğrenciler de çok severler. Kendileri isterlerse bunu aynı zamanda e, kodlamayla da yapabilirler. Burada gizli bir yer yaptık ama oyunda tabii çok yer kaplamasın 40 dakikalık bir ders süresi diye çok uzun konuştum ama e, bu şekilde tasarlar. E, kamera ve portfolyo fotoğraf çekmelerini ve kendi e, oluşturacakları kitapla bilgisayarlarını kayıt yapmalarını sağlayacak. In this portfolio, students can save the informations on their computer. And they can take the camera. They can take the 
Evcil hayvanlara çok önem veriyoruz biz e, Antalya'da. Bu yüzden kedimiz, papağanımız mutlaka ki var. E, o yüzden de bunlar da yer almakta öğrencilerimizin e, evcil hayvanları olsun diye. There are also pets here, you know, uh, students love pets and uh, so they care pets and we make, uh, we make awareness for animals. Bir e, side evlerinin e, görüntüsünü yapmaya çalıştık. Side evleri genellikle kafe olarak kullanılır. Öğrenciler bu kafelerin içine girerek de Minecraft'ın mekanizmalarını görmüş olacaklar. She made up uh, houses, Turkish houses in Side ancient site and students can enter inside the house and they can create mechanisms, they can make codings in the house. Hemen buraları hızlıca geçiyorum. Şurada bir mekanizmamız daha var o işlerine gideceğini düşünüyorum. Oraya da köpeğimiz oturmuş şansa. O zaman onu mu ziyarete şöyle vurmadan ona nasıl yapacağım? Evet, she, evet, created, bir... she created a dog in the house as you see in the screen. O evcil olduğu için şu an gitmek istemiyor. Mecburen onu göndereceğiz. Um, şöyle yapalım. Bir. Evet onu gönderelim şöyle. Mecburen o gitti. Um, gizli bir geçit gibi düşünün. Um, öğrenciler böyle şeyi çok seviyorlar. Buradaki sandığa ulaşmak için de e, o köpeği tabi onları indirecekler. Çünkü köpek normalde yok. Şimdi geçmeye başlıyoruz. There is a tunnel here. Tunnel here and students go through this tunnel to find new boxes. Because in these boxes there are materials here and uh, she can get points through these materials. Hemen bir örnek yapayım. Diyorum ama Gitmeden ineyim. Evet şöyle. Bastık mı? Oops, gittik. Evet. Şimdi devam edelim. Evet. Ee, otellerimiz çok önemli de istedi. Bu yüzden örnek bir otel tasarladık. Ee, ve sayıları da burada veriyoruz. Ne kadar Antalya'da otel var? Hotels are also important in blue economy because you know in tourism people gain earn money and people work in tourism. That's why when students click on this uh, character, there will be the number of hotels in Antalya and the number of people who's working in tourism sector. sandıklarımız ve buradaki sandıklardan topluyorlar nesneleri. Portföyüyorlar bunları. Burada gizli bir geçitimiz var. İsterlerse gidip üstlerini değiştirebiliyorlar. Kıyafetleri şu an benim mesela değişti şu an içine girdiğim için. Onlar da aynı evet. şekilde yapabilirler. Okay, uh, get in the clothes, put on your new clothes. Okay, we have five minutes. Uh, hocam, beş dakikamız var bitirmek için. Tamam, hemen bitiriyorum. Şöyle devam edeyim. Ee, ülkemize gelen turist sayısı bizim için çok önemli dediğimiz gibi. Ee, ne kadar turist geliyor, hangi turistlerden daha fazla geliyor? Bunun da bilgisini avatarlarımızı alabiliyorlar. Uh, by clicking on the avatars, uh, as you see in the screen, uh, we learn Because tourism is very important in Antalya, for and also for the municipal project, um, so we are learning the number of the tourists who visit Antalya, who visit Turkey, and who visit Side. Burada bot dedi bir e, gemi gezintisi var ve çok şu Türkler de çok seviyor. Önemli bir ekonomik e, gelir aynı zamanda ona da yardı. She also created a bot. Evet, şöyle de onu gösterelim. Bot. İçeride isterlerse evet. öğrenciler gezebilecek kısa. 
this bot is also very important for uh, income for of the families in tourism. So she made up a bot in Minecraft game, and students take a tour with the, uh, with the uh, bot, and she learn about the sea. Kadar dinlediğiniz için çok teşekkür ederim. Okay, she passed very quickly. Uh, thank you very much for listening to her. This is Minecraft game. Students mm -hmm. enjoy and learn by learning new cultures about their culture. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Engin hocam, son olarak şeyi de söyleyelim mi e, paketi e, e, Minecraft Education e, oyun paketini evet. söyleyebilir miyim? E, Minecraft Education oyun paketi e, lisanslarınızla birlikte ücretsiz sizin olacak. E, İngilizce olarak e, İngilizce dersleri, hem bilgisi, matematik, bilgisayar, mat, tasarım derslerini de öğrencileriniz ücretsiz sayacaklar. Okay, uh, she uh, she contacted uh, Minecraft Turkish office and she got free license for this project and our students can play this game uh, during uh, one year for free and they can learn uh, English, mathematics, science, technology, computer. I mean, in any lessons, students can use this game. Okay, so as I understand, this is an inter interdisciplinary approach. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was a, a real pleasure to have her around and uh, in this uh, webinar. Uh, we are about to close because it's already late in all partners' uh, countries. Uh, Nefeli, do we have any question for Yuxen? No, we do not have any questions. Okay, so in this case, I have just a few things to share. Uh, we will try to to show something um, on YouTube. I'm not so sure whether we can. Uh, okay, let's see if I can do it. Uh, we are uh, here, and uh, some final information before we say good night. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. okay, okay. So in that case, uh, all participants will receive their certificates in the following days. Please have a look uh, on your spam emails just to make sure that you have received the certificate. Uh, if any schools are interested in participating in the European competition in the framework of Blue Schools projects, they can either visit the project website and particularly the part that refers to the competition framework. I can uh, share this, sorry. Uh, no, I can share this link in a while so that you can uh, have access to it. I will do it in the chat. Uh, an alternative way to contact us is uh, via this uh, email, blueschools.competition uh, at gmail.com. And presentations will be soon available through the project's website. Before we say good night, I would like to, to share with you a, a last minute uh, news that I've uh, read. And it is about this uh, floating continent, which uh, claims to be a self-sustainable, um, uh, let's say, construction. I don't know how to describe it, but nevertheless, it is too ambitious. Uh, the main objective is to clean the ocean. And uh, you can see some information here related to what the situation of plastic uh, that end up in the sea every year is. Uh, so the senior designer at Zaha Hadid Architects, if I say it correctly, in London, that is a woman and her name is Lenka Petrakova. She developed the idea, I think she comes from Slovenia. Uh, she developed the idea for her student master thesis at the University of Applied Arts in Studio, Hani Rashid, a few years ago. And this is the project that uh, is finally on board. This station removes plastic from the sea and houses research and education facilities, as well as an ocean plastic recycle center. It produces its own energy and is equipped with greenhouses and desalination centers. This is uh, something that I have taken from Euronews. Uh, I don't know if you can uh, 
Nefeli, if you can try to share this one minute video, do you think you can do that? Otherwise, yes, give, give me a second. Yes, it would be lovely to watch this video and then we say goodnight. Despite the fact that oceans may never have seen a human being, they feel the effects of human activities as millions of tons of trash enter the ocean each year. The floating station is collecting plastic debris from the surface and breaks it down to recyclable material. Its elements can cooperate and optimize the power source to create a self-sufficient living organism. The natural forces are affecting not only the inside processes but the station's movement and positioning. The station consists of five main parts. The barrier, which serves to collect waste and harvest tidal power. The collector, where waste is sorted and stored. The greenhouses, where plants are grown and water is desalinated. The research and education labs. The floating station is cleaning the ocean and restoring the balance in the marine environment. It creates the interdisciplinary platform to fight against the dilution that we cannot hurt the ocean by our action onshore. Thank you very much, Nefeli, for sharing this. Uh, uh, thank you all for being here. I hope this last uh, one minute video was something to give you uh, food for thought. We thank you for staying uh, in such a late hour. It was nice to have you, even though we didn't have the opportunity to interact so much. I would like to especially thank the panelists that were here with us and said so many interesting things. On behalf of Blue School Projects, I'm saying good night. Marina, would you like to do it also? Yeah, thank you very much again. And I uh, wish to have you uh, in the competition and uh, in the next uh, webinar we will uh, handle uh, soon. Thank you very much. Okay. And Gin, would you like to say a short good night? Yes, thank you very much for organizing this event and for your people. So, good night to everyone. Good night from around Europe. Stay safe. Bye-bye.